Good morning. Yesterday we had a very full-on travel day, which included getting three different buses in order to get us from Marissa up here to Nakumbo. The cumulative journey time was about eight hours. It wasn't the most comfortable, but the key thing is we got here. We stayed at an airport hotel in Nagumbo just so we would have easy access to the airport this morning because our flight is early. So let's head to the lounge. We are in the Colombo Lotus Lounge, and since we're in a new lounge, it's time for our famous lounge rating system. In terms of food, they have a really good variety. They have some options that are Sri Lankan and other options that are Western, and I would say that the flavor of the food is really good. However, you can tell that it's not fresh and it's been sitting out a little bit longer. For example, the hash browns are pretty soggy, but we are still going to give it a 6 out of 10. On the drinks front, we've been very pleasantly surprised. The coffee that we've had is actually very, very good, which is kind of surprising for lounge coffee. In terms of soft drink options, then you have pretty much everything under the sun. You've got fresh juices available as well. But then on top of that, you have top shelf booze that you would never get anywhere else, which is fantastic. The only slight downside maybe is the fact that it's a bit limited on wine and beer options, but really it's still very good. So with that, we're gonna give this one an eight. As for cleanliness, this isn't the most clean of lounges. You can tell that the furnishings and floor haven't been updated in a while, so I think a lot of it was probably just age related, but Nick did say he had to wipe some crumbs off the chairs. So with that, we're gonna give this a six. Comfort is a very solid seven. You do have the option of dining tables behind me, but the vast majority of the rest of this lounge is all stuff like this, which is lovely, if not luxurious. As for the amenities, it is very similar to the Toronto lounge in that they have a shower room, they have Wi-Fi in here, and they actually have a business center where you have access to a computer and a printer. The one downside to this lounge is that they have charging points. There are not plugs like in the chairs or in the walls close to you. And again, I think that probably has to do with the age of the lounge. So with that, we're giving it a seven. And when you put that all together, that gives us a grand total of 34. I think as we mentioned, everything here is pretty standard and puts us to kind of about a mid-tier lounge based on what we've done. But I think the only thing that's counting against this is just, it's a bit dated. I think if we'd come here maybe 15, 20 years ago, then this would be the best thing since sliced bread. But since a lot of the best lounges that we've been to have been very modern, the food's always been fresh, and there's just been a plethora of options available, then that's obviously just relegated this a little bit further down. And that's not to say that this is bad by any stretch. This is still absolutely lovely because I think what we've noticed is that there are lounges which are pretty low budget, then there's mid-tier lounges, and there's a lot that are hovering in that mid-tier range where really not much separates it, maybe like a point or two here and there, and then there's the super elevated higher tier lounges. So it'll be interesting to see as we go along what the rest of the lounges we encounter rate. Okay, now 
how much more comfortable was that plane ride than the bus journey yesterday? <laughs> Like the bus rides were about a two, this was about an eight, so... I mean, I know wait. that this was like half the time as in a four hour journey, but I think we can officially declare that plane seats are more comfortable than Sri Lankan bus seats. Barely even a contest. So there are a few ways that we can get from the airport to our Airbnb. One of them is an express train that requires us to change to a different train. The one that we thought we were going to go with was the cheapest one, which is a bus that then requires us to change to a train. However, it's not for another hour. And so we decided to check Grab, which is like the local Uber here in Asia. And it was pretty reasonable. So it's going to cost us for the 45, 50 minute journey, just under $20 right now. And had we taken the train option, it would have actually been more expensive than doing this grab. So it was really between either the bus or a grab. And today, I guess you could say we kind of decided to splash out instead of wait the hour for the bus. So we have finally made it and this apartment is so nice. Like really, really good job on getting this Airbnb listing. Yeah, they're kind of like fancy condos. Yeah, so we're definitely gonna enjoy this over the next few days. <laughs> However, one thing we've realized since arriving is that we have not eaten in about eight hours. So we are going to rectify that immediately by going to our local Family Mart. I think Family Mart is kind of similar to 7-Eleven in Asia, mm -hmm. which both have a reputation for just kind of being like an awesome place to get cheap food. So I can't wait to see what we can find. There's onigiri. This is my favorite thing when I was in Japan. Probably gonna get one for dinner. What's Pepsi Mint? Look at all these coffees and teas for the morning. They had this in Japan also. I'm so excited that they have all these drinks for us here. Because we're gonna only end up having two meals today, we got quite a bunch of onigiri, which Nick has set out in a pyramid shape. How beautiful. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and we got a variety of flavors. It was really difficult to choose, and I think there's still more that we want to pick from. Nick also got this bun called melon pan, which is new, should be interesting. We got water, and then all of these coffees are actually for tomorrow morning. This came to a total of 55 ringgit, which is 16 Canadian dollars. So not cheap, but also not crazy expensive when you think that like this is our lunch slash dinner. This is my first onigiri experience. This is the spicy tuna, and I'm really excited for this. I think you know that Rachel and I are big kind of sushi fans and I think we've been missing this a little bit while we've been abroad. This is bringing it all back. Ah, oh, so happy. And this is the aforementioned melon bun. Doesn't really smell like much, but let's see what happens when I bite into it. Mm. Oh, what's inside? Oh, cool. So it's basically melon jam inside, and that's what really brings the flavor out. It's actually very refreshing, really, really nice. 
Can I also just say I leaned in and I smelled your onigiri and I'm salivating now. Mm -hmm. All of that came from what we can really only say is a small family mart. Intrigued to see what happens when we go to a larger one and also how it compares to 7-Eleven. Both in terms of like offering and price. Indeed. But we are utterly famished so we are going to wolf everything down and we will look forward to catching up with you tomorrow. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.